This topic is actually uh, something very interesting because now we talk about a lot about chat GPT, uh, which I think uh, less than a year ago, uh, we have not heard about that. <laughs> and nowadays, it's like, oh, we need, okay. And nowadays, we know that it is actually a common word. Uh, it's so, uh, uh, it is so common that just like Google in the old days, uh, uh, people say, I'll Google something. Now they say, I'll chat GPT something. <laughs> okay, so let's, uh, I prepared quite a number of slides, uh, but basically I think it will also uh, uh, maybe allow some time for the discussion or question and answer. Uh. And today, uh, some of the sites, maybe some uh, before that I have shared with you, but I try to connect this one to how our human mind actually thinks and how JetGPT actually uh, have some similarity with how our brain works. And, and the same principle applies as well. And it opens up many questions. Huh? Uh, as we know, I think this is actually uh, a, a chart uh, uh, compiling all the learning theories uh, that nowadays actually the common one used uh, by the researchers and all that learning theory. But if you look at all those ten learning theory, they are actually more uh, focusing on certain aspect of it, certain aspect of it. Okay. So in this case, if you look at it, uh, we will go. We would like to go back to the original purpose of education. Why do you want? Do we want to have this education? What is the original purpose of that one? And in terms of that one, we can actually ask a lot of parents. Uh, what do they wish their children to be in the future? So a lot of time they will say that we just wish our students, uh, our, our children, to be well, healthy, and happy. Am I right? I mean, when they grow up and all that. So this is actually a common wish, lah. So basically, if you look at the original purpose, ah, in fact, it, the education is very simple. That means that if we we hope that our children they will be able to develop this lifelong learning because the whole life they have to keep on learning. They have to continue to grow up, am right? Continue to develop themselves. Self-development, personal development is very important. That's why lifelong learning is very important. This is one aspect of it. But that aspect itself is not enough by going upwards. <laughs> it's not enough because by going upwards, they may do something wrong, but going upwards, okay? So the other one is actually the other aspects will come in is loving kindness. I mean, they should de develop themselves in actually their passions, in, in actually their loving kindness toward others. So if we look at education, look at all this, and all, the original purpose is very simple. Continue to let our children to develop themselves to be, so that they are able to cope with the work, they are cope with the life, they need to know how to actually continue to learn new things. And the second aspect is actually they, how they actually treat people, treat their parents, how they treat their children, how they treat their colleagues, how they actually deal with the world, deal with people and all that. I mean, in this case, how they develop their loving kindness. So by learning all, by, by knowing all these two things, basically, uh, it's like what Buddha has taught us, taught us uh, to how to actually develop the wisdom and also compassion. Am right? So these are the two important things, uh, as you can see. Uh. Now, if you look at the technology revolutions, uh, since the early days of agricultural revolutions and then the industrial revolutions and then now the digital revolutions, that the main difference between this digital revolution and the previous revolution is that this digital revolution is actually not constrained by any physical limits. That means in the physical world, in industrial uh, revolution or agricultural revolution, all the products are based on atoms and molecules. But first time in the human world, we have product which is actually based on information. And in, in this digital world that we create, where we spend more and more time there, especially um, young generation, some of them spend a number of hours per day uh, in this digital world. Huh? And it is actually no physical limit. That means that whatever we can think about it, we can create the services. So we never know what kind of new services will be introduced in this digital world. Who knows that? Uh, who knows that actually? Uh, 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 because in the normal world, I can jump as high as a uh, one meter, but in the in the digital world, I can fly. Okay, so that's why 
uh, when uh, Facebook mentioned about the metaverse, and recently, I think about a month ago, I was in China, in Hangzhou, and I met with one CEO, and, uh, 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 and he, they just launched an a app called Wonderful World. And that Wonderful is totally a new metaverse. And within a week, they, now this app is still only applicable, uh, uh, it can be downloaded in China. But within a week, the users has climbed up to uh, 100 million. 100 million. A wonderful where inside this world, everything is digital. You can, you can even actually be employed to do some work inside their digital world. And they, they have the currency that can be changed to renminbi. Huh. Okay, so it is actually something, but of course they don't allow the trading of currency, but it's actually fixed rate and all that. So this is going to change about how we view about the world. Okay. So if we look at the evolution of economy, I'm not too sure whether I've shared with you in our, my previous talk, but basically if we look at this one, the, the last column is about human resource. What kind of human resource we need in future? Okay, so if you look at agricultural type revolution, you need labor, you need slave. Okay, then the first industrial revolutions, you need blue, blue collar worker because you build out, they, they, they build a lot of factories, you need all those blue collar workers. And then the second uh, industrial revolution with the invention of electricity, electrical systems, and all that, factory can be automated, and then with business going more, and you need a lot of critical work and all that. And you need a lot of the time white collar workers. Now, if you compare white collar workers, blue collar workers, and and also the the labor and all that has been increasing. Uh, uh, a content of knowledge they need to possess before they can work. So that means that all these revolutions has brought to the needs in the and demand in the uh, 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 business world or the the in the actual work natures of it uh, where where the workers need to actually possess more and more knowledge. And that's why education is important. Education is important. And then comes to the, the third uh, industrial revolution, which is uh, last century when we have this uh, computer, we have this internet coming out. Then at that time, you know that we need a lot of knowledge worker where they need to actually learn a lot of things. They need to actually be able to cope with a complex uh, 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 job functions and all that. Now, what about the fourth industrial revolution, which we are now dealing with? Ah, okay. The fourth, under the fourth industrial revolution, which we are dealing with, uh, where we think that we need uh, this kind of workers. Okay. First of all, we need uh, knowledge workers uh, with growth mindset. What do you mean by growth mindset? Growth mindset is actually a, a, a mindset that you are able, you, you are willing to actually continue to grow. You still believe in your potential. You believe that if you want to learn, you can be better. And you believe that all challenges face, as long as you are willing to learn, to find out solution, you'll be able to overcome that one. That growth mindset. Because it's no longer actually predictable what kind of problems we are going to face in future. In the past, experience will help you. Because you have been working in this area for 20 years, 30 years, the experience can help you because the kind of problem, the nature of the problem will come out will be about the same. Okay. Uh, but now you never know. <laughs> because in the in, in our know, work and all that, now we are facing the problem that what if our employees use chat GPT <laughs> to do their work? <laughs> what if our students, what if many things that uh, we have not faced before? What about even even a lot of things? You talk about genetic engineering. You talk that is it actually okay, ethical for us to actually change mm -hmm. our gene so that we are out of we, we 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 are no longer afraid of certain disease. And we talk about uh, is it okay that if when I'm sleeping, I have my digital win, uh, digital twin actually in the internet in the TikTok selling my product because they can create this digital twin now. Now it's very, very possible. In fact, in China, uh, there are now actually companies selling this digital twin, meaning that uh, 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 you, you, you just actually have to record about 15, 15 seconds to 30 seconds of your, your speech or whatever you are, so that they capture your facial uh, expression, they capture your digital uh, content and all that. And then they let the chat GPT or this kind of generative AI 
to generate the content you want to say, your to profile you want to say, and then when then 24 hours, this digital twin of you can be on the TikTok channel uh, selling all the products and you don't have to pay any employee to do so and never ending. And that one with, with the support of this generative AI, ChatGPT, they can even answer the questions of the, the users, the buyers. Uh, so, so there are a lot of new things coming out and all that. So you need somebody with growth mindset that never mind, ah, again, the new thing, never mind, I'm willing to learn. <laughs> that is the nature, growth mindset. The other one is actually when you're going upwards, growth mindset, growing upwards, you need to actually grow, to, uh, grow as well to in your loving kindness, empathy. Because now we are dealing more and more with algorithms. We are more dealing with algorithms. We are now dealing with machines. Who, who knows in future, uh, expect next five to 10 years, uh, our home or our factory will have actually intelligent robots. Okay, so we have to deal with machines. So we have to actually enhance the relationships between people and people. Okay, so in this case, we find out that what actually uh, is important is human being human. This empathy must have. That is how we are different from <laughs> the algorithm. <laughs> okay, so we believe that the fourth industrial revolution, this two, uh, a knowledge worker with growth mindset and empathy Will be very important. Will be very important. And at this moment, uh, ChatGPT may be able to actually uh, 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 learn all the knowledge that we have acquired, we have accumulated over centuries and all that. But because ChatGPT still don't have the body, they still don't have the relations, they don't have a historical experiences, and they don't have emotions. So they can't really actually represent or Im imitate us 100%. Okay, so this is something is still different. Uh? So that's why empathy is very important. Now, let us look at the life. <laughs> we talk about cos uh, the, the cosmos, talk about universe. Let's look at life itself, life form. So in this chart, we are not talking about life on other planet. We just talk about life on the planet Earth. Okay, Professor Max Stegmark, uh, of MIT once mentioned or categorized life into this life 1.0, life 2.0, life 3.0. I'm not too sure if I stand here, uh, those sitting at the back, can you all see? Can you see, able to see? Uh? Okay, so life 1.0 meaning that uh, these kind of life forms, okay, they actually uh, transfer the knowledge generation by generations through the gene. Because when they reproduce, when the cells uh, 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 divide and sometimes mutate and all that, the knowledge, how they react to the environment, how they survive through the environment will be transferred down actually to the next generation. Okay? So all the living uh, 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 things uh, on earth, these are actually life 1.0. The same thing as, uh, the same thing is actually for our COVID virus is also live 1.0. Okay. So, and it keeps on mutating and all that. Now, live 2.0 is human world. Why is it live 2.0 is human world? Because human, we actually create language. We create language. And that language, because by using language, you can convey your knowledge. Uh, you can educate the next generation with your knowledge. You are able to do it even during the lifetime of the ourselves. Okay, we don't have to wait until the gene is passed through through our children. In during the our lifetime, we can transfer our knowledge to other people, and because of this one, we have actually much more rapid development, and that's why we surpass other life form on Earth. We develop ourselves to be a uh, nowadays a civilized species in that sense okay so we are living in 2.0 and because of that why we are able to achieve this one is because of education that's why why we we keep on saying the importance of education because this is the way how we make sure that although we are we are all mortal one day we will leave this world so knowledge content in our brain and all that we need to transfer to the next generation 
and then they continue to build on top of what. That's why education is key to human species in life 2.0. Okay? Now, in fact, the, 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 this time, the, 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 the whole world, we have this uh, COVID, <laughs> COVID uh, pandemic. is actually the war between life 1.0 and life 2.0. Remember, if we have not actually uh, have this ability to communicate, to do research and all that, we'll be just like 1.0 creature, okay? So when COVID comes and all that, those who can survive, they'll survive and then they'll continue. Those who cannot, um, unfortunately, uh, they, 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 some of them may die and all that. But because of knowledge, because of communication tools and all that, so the moment we found out that this is spreading and all that, we find out a ways of wearing masks. We find out ways of actually how you have to keep washing your hands. We find out ways of how actually uh, isolation will be good to contain. And then finally, we come up with the vaccine. So basically, this COVID is actually war between life form 1.0 and life form 2.0. And we managed to overcome it this time with the knowledge. Okay. Then, of course, Professor Tema also mentioned about life 3.0. Now, life 3.0 is no longer just transfer of knowledge, but also our organs. So life 3.0, he said that organs can be reproduced. You can actually generate, you can, you can grow your own tissues, which is approaching that time already. Because now, like for example, we have a cataract operation, we have knee operation. In fact, we, we are actually having more and more of human body being replaced with something artificial and and it's useful and it can be done, okay? So life 3.0 will be actually organs can be changed so that you can have a new organ and hopefully in future, brain can be replaced and, and the, the company actually founded by Elon Musk, Neuralink, is now doing this uh, interfacing with the brain to try to actually tap how we store the knowledge. Then hopefully in future, you can actually uh, in certain part uh, in future, if you can actually store all this one, and in future, when we, if we suffer from brain damage, uh, you can actually reinstall, <laughs> reinstall all this one to the other part of your brain because the brain is actually very versatile. It doesn't, it has multifunctional. So it can grow, it, we can actually install back in different parts of the, the brain so that you can regain your knowledge or we can gain your skill in doing certain things. Okay, so hopefully in future, if the brain can be replaced and your your memory, your experience, and don't know whether your consciousness consciousness can be transferred, then you have this superhuman in life 3.0. This is what Professor uh, Tegmark mentioned. Then for me, I added something. <laughs> I say that now we are no longer just live in 2.0 because we have this. Uh, 2.a, 2.1a. Why 2.1a? Because we have created a new digital world. In the digital world, knowledge can be transferred, okay? Can be spread, can be can, can, can be shredded and all that. So in the digital world, it is like a life form. Many people have uh, 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 spent more time in digital world and some of them may even have different characters compared their their experience or their behavior in the real world and the, in the digital world. So uh, I say that we, we have actually a life 2.1a is a digital human world and social media. We have created a new one, okay? Who knows in future, uh, even when we pass away, the, uh, ourself, our assistant in the digital world will continue uh, just like uh, 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 the, the movie. Uh, early this year, there's a, there was a movie from China, The Wandering Earth. Uh, number two, where the famous actor Andy Lau finally became uh, the digital Andy Lau I mean, in the movie and all that. Okay, now then the other one is actually we even not just digital world, we are creating another new life form which is capable of transferring knowledge because they know our language, they are able to transfer knowledge so they fulfill the definition of life 2.0 which is the artificial intelligence. So we are creating a new life form already. Uh, it is it's a fact if you look at the definition of a, 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 a 2.0 because we are not talking about consciousness in this case. Huh? So we are creating. So in this case, uh, we have to actually look at 
after understanding all this one, oh, sorry, forgot. Then in future, when we come to 3.0, this uh, artificial, artificial intelligence will develop further and there will be intelligent law boards. So at that time, when we talk about life 3.0, it is actually about coexistence between the human race, which, which is going to be huge, superhuman, and also the super artificial intelligent robots uh, coexistence. But we know we have, we have no idea whether by that time the robot will have its consciousness or not. We are not too sure. Okay. So by knowing all this one, now we look at the our economy, uh, the knowledge economy. So if you look at this one over the years, just now as I mentioned to you about the evolutions of the economy. Uh, we are actually now not no longer actually needing uh, people to sometime to focus on work, which is just data collection. We are slowly moving from just data collection because data can be collected by sensors. Every one of you are contributing data every day. When you're driving on the road, nah, your handphone, although you don't switch on navigation mode, nah, you are providing information to <laughs> Google and Waze so that they know whether the traffic, there's traffic jam or not. We are all the time <laughs> providing all this data. So all this data collection have been done automatically. Then the, the compilation of data will give you the information you know about a certain part of the information. And by combining information of various aspects and all that, you have the knowledge so that you are able to, to perform certain jobs. Okay, And in order for you to actually learn this knowledge, create new knowledge and then apply knowledge, you need the intelligence, okay? The intelligence. Uh, so this is intelligence that we are talking about. When we talk about education nowadays, we are talking about not just how the, our students, our children learn the knowledge because by knowing the knowledge itself is no longer enough. Because why? Everybody has handful. <laughs> uh, they can find any information very quickly. But, what we need is actually at the level of intelligence so that you'll be able to know by having all kinds of information, uh, by, uh, you'll be able to tell which one is right, which one is wrong, am I right? And that one is just not uh, uh, just the, at the level of intelligence. It is a level of wisdom, wisdom to determine ethically whether this is right, this is wrong. Because those people with... Uh, 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 intelligence may use their intelligence to do evil work. You need the wisdom to actually help them to decide what is right, what is wrong. So we are talking about higher hierarchy in terms of this one. That's why when you go higher upwards, the importance of moral and ethical education is getting more and more important. Okay, So by having the children, uh, having us actually to learn uh, in various a teaching related to this moral and ethical education is very important because the automation part AI work is coming out from the bottom to replace some of the function we normally do. Uh, so, so as you can see, lah, where we can see, so we have to have the growth mindset to continue to develop further because down there we have IoT, Internet of Things, collecting all the, <laughs> the sensor, collecting all the information and uh, all the data. And then you have Google, all the search engine to help you to search for information. And now you even have ChatGPT, Bard, and all that. Uh, that actually have the ability to compile. And whatever question you, you post to them, they will be able to answer you. Okay. So by knowing this one, let us rethink about all this. Are we getting smarter? Let me post you another question in the next slide. Hmm. This slide. <laughs> Let's think about it. Are you now actually with, I think after a few years of using Waze, using Google Map, all right, are you now more comfortable or more confident in driving in Kuala Lumpur? Or now you have less confidence if you don't have your handphone? <laughs> all right. So, so in this case, uh, we are actually, without us knowing, you know, we are actually, uh, how to say, slowly actually uh, 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 getting more, uh, uh, less uh, intelligence in about this one. Because why? We are too much dependent on certain things. So what we know now is actually go straight forward, turn right, turn left. 
<laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So, so in this case, that will also ring a bell. So with all these new things, even generative AI and all that, will there come a day where we are actually too much dependent on this one? So basically, we are also considered, uh, we will, will no longer actually, actually develop ourselves uh, to cope with the challenge of the world. Uh, so this is something for us to think about it. Uh, to think about it. Uh, for example, in the movie, uh, War E, maybe some of you have watched this movie before, quite a number of years ago, uh, about a movie from uh, Disney and also Pizza. Uh, uh, in, in that movie, you look at the future human being. They will be actually on the, is this a, 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 a transport? This is auto driving one transport. And then, of course, they don't exercise. So we put on weight. And then in front of them, is just a screen. So morning after waking up, screen. Then throughout the whole day, just look at the screen. Sounds familiar. Huh? <laughs> good, good, good. Sounds familiar. We are spending more and more time on this little screen and all that. Okay. So we, we, we don't know. Okay. So in this case, it is very important to for us to revisit about how we learn. We have to actually realize about the situation and what is coming. Okay. So let us go back to the original purpose of education, which just now I mentioned, that lifelong learning and then also about the loving kindness. Uh, when you talk about lifelong learning, you find out that now in general, uh, in many countries, you found out that the younger generation or even sometimes in the company, you find out the uh, some employees and all that. Uh, uh, and all that. You, because information is so easy to get, so they would think that this is something like natural and they don't have to take effort to learn because no getting the information from the handphone compared to getting the information from your brain is different because whatever in your brain is something that you have learned, you have internalized and you have integrated it with other parts of your knowledge in your brain. Uh, which that means that you have gone through the higher level of processing. But getting information for the internet from the handphone is just information, knowledge. It's not yet internalized. Okay? So if people think that since everything is available and all that, I don't have to learn and all that, and they lose interest of learning. So it's just time for us to relook at this one to initiate back, uh, uh, to initiate our curiosity. A lot of time we talk about why, uh, uh, how to actually uh, 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 promote creativity. <laughs> now, if we, before we talk about uh, providing creativity, uh, we must talk about curiosity. This is very nature because when we were young, uh, when our neural, ne neural network is not yet actually so highly connected and all that, there's always a quest to know something Known everything and all that. So this curiosity must continue to have. But nowadays, we are more like actually a passive learner. Like for example, you switch on TikTok, you are pushed with videos. Right? Seldom now we search for video, but we are pushed, we are slowly actually, uh, sometimes people say that, uh, uh, Oh, sorry, uh, maybe this should not be the, the, the comparison. I think the, in the uh, previous one or two century, we know that at that time, there was this time where people take opium. Uh, so slowly, without realizing, we are actually being actually addicted to something. So passively, we just receive whatever which is supposed to us, but we never do active search or we seldom do. Okay, That curiosity. So nowadays, in the past, when you're doing search information, if you find a, info, a piece of information, if you don't know more, if you want to learn more, naturally you do with subsequent search, right? But now, when we are actually pushed with all those videos, do we do a subsequent search? No, you just scan and you just move on to the next video, next video, and, then, and all these video, whatever, or information from Instagram mm -hmm. or whatever, is actually a push uh, information to you and it's a passive way and 
it will be just like that one. It will just a piece of information flying through. And sometimes it's from your right. Just like last time when we were young, the, the teacher always say that, oh, it's like whatever they taught us, huh, it's actually coming in from the right ear and then going out from the left ear. How many things that you still remember after you have watched 1,000 videos in TikTok, for example? A lot of time it's just passing by because it has not gone through the process Internal, internalization. You have not actually built or reconstruct your own thinking system, your own value system and all that. That one, because our brain is actually a biochemistry base. It needs time. It's not like computer. It's just <laughs> very fast. So we must begin back this curiosity. Okay? So like just like Sir Ken Robinson, okay? curiosity is still the engine. So very important that to actually ask ourselves, not, not just our children or our children, just ourselves, are you still curious? Or we are just like the war, the war E movie, being passive, just entertainment, passive and all. Huh? Uh, then the other thing about creativity, how do you come up with creativity? Your creativity, that means that you have to think out of the box. And for your brain to come up with some new ideas or not, you must have the uh, 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 widely connected network in your brain. That means that even when you see there's a pen, your pen is doing, if you do mind mapping, your pen is connected to many, many things and all that. And that's why when you're about, you are about you, you, you need to come up with something creative about the pen, you can connect new things and you can come up with new ideas. Okay, That's why sometimes people say, uh, for us to live in Malaysia because of this multicultural, multicultural uh, uh, lingual uh, society and all that, we actually have a lot of simul uh, stimulations, uh, connections that make you more creative. Okay, So these are two are connected. So when we talk about this one, we are now thinking about the education should not be just uh, like the industrial manufacturing process that you come in a group of students uh, then go through the typical curriculum and then graduate. Because why? In the past, you can have a control, more control environment. In the past, when they come back to home, they just learn. Or the, the most is actually to watch TV. And you know that every student maybe watch the same uh, 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 drama or whatever. Like uh, when, when we were young, when we watched the uh, Hong Kong <laughs> uh, drama silly or uh, Xiong Hoi Hon and all this kind of thing, we have common, we have common hobby or common knowledge about certain things, right? Okay, so so it's it's more like the, the the manufacturing process and all that. Okay, but nowadays throughout the whole education process, every student, every child, they are actually through internet, right? Learning new things. Even twins, brothers, and twin sister, they are watching different things now. <laughs> so they now start reacting differently because their neural network will be different. Okay. So now we think that education should be not just this one. This is still important. We still need to give them guided curriculum with a proper structure and all that because we know what is fundamental, what is important. But at the same time, we are actually living like in an organic farm, no? We are living in an organic farm because they are exposed to all kinds of influences from the handful. You can never uh, control or uh, monitor them for 24 hours, and right? Uh, whatever they see in the, in the, in, along the way and all that, they are seeing a lot of things. So it is very important that in this organic farm, let them grow with energy with uh, 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 with uh, 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 with their own struggle with their own actually effort but we can provide the parents the family the schools can provide enough of nutrition water sunlight guidance and all that and this kind of thing you can see that nowadays they will grow on their own but we hope that everyone finally will actually uh, be able to actually uh, 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 become flowers and you have a, a, a garden full of all kinds of flowers. Everybody will have their way of developing themselves, their way of actually becoming themselves and their way of actually 
uh, being successful. So there's no standard successful model now because there are so much different opportunity. There are so many kinds of different kinds of jobs and all that. So that is the way how we can think about education through all these changes. Oh, just like Silicon Valley, people was, uh, was wondering why Silicon Valley is actually able to continue to come up with innovation after innovation. If you look at that one, since 1970-something, and initially, uh, they, all their initial projects is about contract from the Department of Defense. But later, you can see that they started on with uh, uh, integrated circuit, IC, then the third way, personal computer, the fourth way is internet, the fifth way is social media, and now the, the sixth way is AI. And throughout these years, sometimes it comes down, then it goes up again. Why is it that the ecosystem that is able to always come up with new innovation is because they have this ecosystem of talent development uh, with growth mindset that I mentioned. Growth mindset. Failure, never mind. As long as you try, you have creativity, you have curiosity, you continue to try. And then with the whole garden of uh, 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 flowers, uh, then some flowers will definitely grow faster, go better. And then people will follow and there will be new innovation coming out. So that is the way that we try to cultivate this piece of garden so that they can develop further. Uh, so growth mindset, as mentioned by Professor uh, Carol Doyle of Stanford UNC, she, she actually uh, uh, suggests this idea. is Compared to fixed mindset and growth mindsets, uh, this mindset will think that I have this intelligence and if something I cannot do is because my intelligence cannot support. But those with growth mindset is actually, I know I have this intelligence. Okay, If something that I don't know, never mind, I can learn, I can develop further. That's this growth mindset. Okay, next one. Uh, let's look at time. Okay, so after knowing of a growth mindset, the empathy, like nowadays, all these high-tech guru uh, are also claiming the importance of empathy. But Microsoft CEO say that uh, innovation comes from having a deep sense of empathy. And Apple CEO Tim Cook mentioned that why Apple is popular is because not just, not, it's not be just because of the technology or not because of the, uh, the skill or whatever, but it's because of the heart they think uh, further for the user so that user find it very useful, very friendly and develop a sense of belonging and they like to continue using Apple. Huh? So that is how the human touch of it is becoming more important. Okay, so and why is it the technology are developing faster and faster? It's because of conversions. Because the development in nanotech, nanotechnology will help the development in biotech. The development in nanotech will also help the development in the ICT. Uh, and all these one will actually help each other. So the process, the growth is faster. And now with AI, you can actually have AI actually replacing or taking over or helping the researcher to do research. So now they can do 24 times 4, 7 hours of research. At home, when you're sleeping, they can continue to do simulation to find out the best molecular structure to cure certain things, uh, develop of a pharmaceutical drugs and all that, development of a new material, maybe faster because of AI. So we foresee that, that the, uh, the development of technology will become faster. Okay, so so now by knowing all this one, then how real are these challenges from robot and AI? Huh? As you can see, this is Boston Dynamics. Okay, uh, 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 it is actually a robot. You can check from YouTube that it can actually run like a human being. It can actually jump. It can actually now in the uh, YouTube you can see that how they actually do work huh, in the in the in the factory and all that. So if you team out these uh, uh, robots and the AI, then very soon we will have this artificial intelligent robot. And the approach now is actually, the Boston Dynamic approach is actually more like they'll teach the robots how to do works. Okay, so for past 20 years, they have been developing and then the robots now is actually becoming, uh, is actually becoming more and more capable, capable. But you have also heard about a project of this humanoid 
by Elon Musk and some other company, where their approach is they let the robots learn on their own. Okay, so uh, you if you check the video about this uh, robot from Elon Musk company, uh, Optimus, just like the in the movie Transformer, the Optimus Prime, Optimus. So when we first introduced the Optimus to the world, you can see the Optimus is walking very slowly. People say, huh, how come this is a humanoid you are going to produce? Uh? But after just a few months, the most recent video, you can see that this robot has learned a lot of things, can do sort thing of bosses, can actually know which kind of bosses, all self-learning. So this self-learning algorithm will be getting faster and faster. So very soon, maybe that approach will actually have a better robot than this approach. We never know, okay? And we are not talking about a single robot, no. We are talking about some more robots. <laughs> some robot. Remember, we talked about education. When we, if, if standing next to me is a, a, a famous scientist, Albert Einstein, it takes how many years for the human world to, to, to educate or to develop or, or one another Albert Einstein? Many years. Okay. But imagine if now standing next to me is the world's best artificial intelligence uh, uh, robots. How long does it take for, uh, for us to reduplicate that? As long as you have funds, you have factory, you can liberate 10,000, 1 million of that one, and within a few months, all over the world will be using this best uh, humanoid, best artificial intelligence robot. Okay, so the, so what the, what does it mean? That means that the chat GPT is just a beginning, <laughs> a very, very small beginning. There will, we will see more things coming out. But human being, we have survived through many challenges. Okay, so as long as we are willing with the growth mindset and empathy, we should be able to overcome these challenges. Just imagine, you just imagine, actually how well you actually use a handphone now so complex applications and you are able to do so but if you go back to 20 years ago uh, at that time people are not uh, not well versed in this one you'll find out like, what oh, is fantastic you can do use handphone to do so many things but we learn okay so in future you actually learn how to do so okay now Okay, so by knowing all those background and all that, then now I want to go to the next section to go deep into ChatGPT, to know what it is. I'm not too sure, maybe some of you are from IT uh, industry or whatever, but maybe some of you are also using ChatGPT and all. I just want to tr introduce you some basic concept of ChatGPT, that kind of approach, okay? According, uh, is, uh, the full name of ChatGPT is actually Chat Generative uh, pre-trained transformer, okay? Generative because it is actually, it, it generates the, 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 the reply based on algorithm, based on the connections, based on the, the parameters that have been trained, okay? It's generative. So that's why you say, say that if you, if you use Google to search and you copy and then you paste on your article, this is not generative. This is just copying. <laughs> Uh, by being generative is actually when you actually prompt one question, it actually goes to its network, new, its own uh, internal neural network uh, or the, the, the storage. Look at the, all the training that he, he has done, he has learned and all that, and then reply based on this approach. Okay. Then trans, uh, pre-trained because all this knowledge is pre-trained. Just like how are you going to actually why, why, when, when I ask you a question, why are you able to answer the question? It's because through years of education and experience in your brain neural network, you're already connected. <laughs> so when I ask you a question, you can answer is because it has been trained in your brain. So the same thing for JetGPT, okay? And, and also, and the, the transformer is actually an architecture. Uh, uh, I, uh, the, the neural network architectures that actually perform this one. Okay? Now, why chat? Why call it chat? For example, let's say for example, this is a Sunday morning, okay? 
and three of you come go to the copitium. Okay, go okay, and you sit down. So somebody must say something first, right? Somebody say, ah, today morning or weather is good, huh? Then the next one, yeah, but tomorrow may be raining or whatever. And then from that first question until maybe after one hour, two hours, you know, the chat continues. All right, the chat because all this will generate more and more response. So the way chat GPT is actually designed is actually it is by prompting it by starting something conversation, and then based on your conversation, based on your prompt, based on your request. Using its algorithm, using its pre-trained pre uh, uh, network and all that, you reply. And the more you talk, the more they know about you, and the more actually you can react to it. So that's why it's never ending. It's never ending it's because it's chat mode. Okay? So if uh, chat GPT is built with large language model, uh, uh, and then with this uh, uh, AI network, uh, pre-tuned supervised training and reinforced learning from human feedback. Uh. Later, I'll mention more about this one. Okay, Basically, GPT 1.0, when it was introduced, uh, it, the train database was using this book corpus, including 11,000 books in the internet with 985 million words. Okay, And then GPT 2 is 1.5 billion parameters with the train database is much bigger database. And then GPT 3.0 is 175 billion parameters and all that to, to, to train it. All those parameters are basically values stored inside the network. They are, they are large language model. And this actually is a way of encoding or a way of actually structure the model so that it captures all the knowledge that it has learned. Okay, and so I will come to that one later and next subsequent slide. Okay, so basically. Uh, initially, when GPT 1.0 and 2.0 were introduced, in fact, sometimes the reply from this GPT are not so perfect. You may reply with some root words because in the internet, all kinds of <laughs> words they use, them, right? Huh? So, yeah. so they actually have gone through this pre-tuned, okay, supervised uh, training by a team of the experts. So they actually have an expert helping them to tell them that, to actually give them some samples of questions and answers and tell them that to train the GPT that this is the way how human reply. <laughs> so they learn. That's why you, you find out that it is more human. Sometimes when you look at what's oh, surprising, then you may start asking whether it has emotion, whether it has feeling or not. It's because it has gone through this pre-trained process through uh, the human uh, expert. They actually hire the team of human uh, expert to do so. But in addition to this one, to improve the, 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 the speed of doing this training, they even actually ask uh, a simple prompt and then ask Check GPT to come up with various answers. And from these various answers, the human team will actually tell them that which answer is better, which answer is not so good or whatever. Then it learns again. It learns again. So it's continue to learn. Just like a small little kid, you remember? When the small little kid look at the, uh, the, the, the relative or whatever, uh, they may say, hello, then just walk away. Then the mother will tell them, oh, it's not, you should not do like that one because uh, uh, he or she is actually your relative and all. You should say, that, uh, hello, auntie, good morning. Uh, then the, 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 the child knows. Oh, next time when you look at auntie, you say, hello, auntie, good morning. And you see, I'm just, hello, and then you go and uh, play and all. So it's the same like our educational process. <laughs> it's the same education process. So nowadays, why is getting wiser and wiser? Because it is being trained, continue to be trained. Okay? So uh, either chat GPT, BART and all that is actually always now, even chat GPT, the uh, GPT 4.0 is actually real time. Uh, so it's continuing to be trained and all that. Okay, now let's look at uh, how uh, a simple way to understand how uh, it is. Okay, so basically, uh, it is actually uh, based on this large language model. It's also based on this, uh, uh, this neural network. You see, neural network, they can have many uh, ways of connecting. All these are digitally encoded in the in, in the database in the program itself okay uh, just like our human neural network you know all connected and all that uh, 
Okay, so now show you one example. Just like for example, we actually set up a simple uh, layer. Uh, uh, I try to explain it so that it's lay person we, we will be able to actually understand it properly. Okay, so for example, we have actually uh, set up a neural network layer. Okay, so the layer is very simple. Input layer is actually you send me all kinds of photos or graphics about dogs and cats. Okay, so my network, my, my network here is the important the, the function is actually to tell to, to output which uh to output and to categorize which graphic is graph cats, which one, which image is dogs. Simple, am right? Simple. It's simple. So how do, do how do we actually classify them, categorize them? Now the traditional machine learning approach will be saying that okay, what you do is actually you check. Okay, you check uh, the, the graphics and all that. So if you look at the, 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 the dog, the, the ear of the dog and the or cat, or if it is going upwards, if it is going this one, then most likely it's a cat, most likely it's a dog. This is normally what we do. Uh, uh, the color, normally dog does not have this color, normally uh, cat has this color. But the way training with neural network uh, is like a black box. It doesn't care about you. What it does is actually, first of all, you have these hidden layers and the parameters, each one of them, each connection has a corresponding parameter to indicate the strength of the link, the strength of the link, okay? So you can initialize it with all values to be zero, it's okay. Uh, okay. So the moment after you send in the first one, coming in, going through this part, and then, it gives you the wrong answer. The cat uh, image was actually designated as a, 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 a dog. So what you do is actually, we can actually give a feedback to the system that this is not correct. How do we adjust the value here so that uh, this one is correctly categorized? Then the next one is a dog. Then it categorized correctly. It strengthened the link. Then the next one. So after training many of this one, Naturally, you set up all the values of parameters here so that whenever next time you see any of these uh, dog or cats, you'll be able to tell whether you should categorize it as a dog or cat. Okay? Now, now after the training, you find out the training fantastic 100%. Okay? So now you give, it, you, you give another picture of a dog just taken and you put it in. So this will be the new one. But if this has been categorized properly with enough training, most likely the new picture will be classified correctly. But sometimes it may be wrong. When it's wrong, never mind. Just keep training, just revising this. And if you have more of these parameters, you have more combination, you can actually be, you can use it to actually uh, determine more accurately. I mean, theoretically, uh, hopefully we can do so. Uh. So this is about this simple task of that one. Okay? So just like our neurons, our human neurons, when you see dog, cat, and after from, from, from when we were young and until now, we know how to differentiate, right? But if somebody brings something which is half dog, half cat, you have to learn. Uh, you say, oh, this one, uh, it should be like that one. So you add. Because we learn. So when we learn, we are actually training our network, neural network, with new knowledge, you know, with new knowledge. This is how we learn, okay? So by extending this one to all kinds of things, all knowledge and all that, then uh, with this uh, uh, GPT or this uh, AI network, it is like a black box. Uh. So it is able to represent the collections of the human knowledge. That's why you can ask any question. But if you ask, actually, like you ask the chat GPT by right, like, I mean, if he does not have consciousness, like, he does not know what he answered. Because it is, uh, 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 it is actually computationally a natural response from the whole network. From the whole network. Okay? You understand, understand what I mean? Huh? Okay. Human being is a bit different because we also have others. We have emotions, 
we have body, we have other things. We are our in our connections is actually a, a biology, chem, biological chemistry kind of connections. So later I will talk more about this part. So by knowing all this one, uh, then you are very clear about holding all this AI thing, and uh, you are very clear about this. Okay, so you may wonder how come he knows grammar, fantastic grammar, because why? What they do is in this case is actually there's also part of the algorithm is actually whenever you will come out you with the reply uh, the words to reply you check that okay normally when people from this question normally how we answers in a human world because of collection of knowledge so normally you uh, uh so normally uh, uh for example I, I say something simple about grammar huh? uh let's say uh he goes to school. He goes to the school. He goes to the school. Okay. Uh, so when you say he and then goes, uh, that's if you want to decide when to use goals or use go. Uh, then when they it check is actually all the connections in the in the model and all that. The probability in the human world that you use he goes is much, much higher than he go. Alright. So he naturally just say he goes. Uh, but to us, we will be surprised how come he actually, uh, this ChatGPT knows grammar. But it's not. It's actually true, the all learning of this one. So the same thing it tells us, in order to train our, to improve our language proficiency, uh, the best way to learn is what? Read more. <laughs> the, the, through this one, the more you read, your connection with value, you be so naturally saying that uh, this is the right way to say. Instead of up before you say, you think about uh, whether this is grammatically correct or not. Human neural network does not work like that one. Okay, so that tells us la, in no matter what you do, uh, any knowledge or any skill or any language you want to acquire, practice is always good. <laughs> Because you strengthen the linkage, you strengthen the values of parameter there, so you'll be able to do better. So playing badminton, how come as a world player you can be able? Because it trained well inside there and the coordinations of everything well. It's just like that one. So that from this one we know how we learn. <laughs> okay, from chat GPT model, it is another way to learn. But of course, previously we already know how we learn. Uh, so, so in this case, we are through this kind of thing, we are already actually uh, create our another civilizations, okay? Meaning that we now have this organic life form, okay? All through this one based on carbon, because all these important molecules are all with the carbon atom, okay? Now we are actually uh, have this uh, 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 silicon base where all the chips driven, uh, the, the 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 robots and AI and all that they driven by the chips and the chips is made of silicon. So this is actually a totally a new life form. Have you seen this kind of life form before? Yes, in the movie Transformers, all right? Uh, it's actually basically this way. Uh, so it can be a life form, no? Uh, it can be a life form because when definition of life form is actually it can continue to survive. It can actually regenerate, it can actually produce the next generation. So if it is able to do so, it's a life form. But whether consciousness or not, we don't know. Lah, huh? You know. Okay? So thinking about AI era, in fact, so far, the human world, we have gone through two encounters. Uh, for those who, who know the early movie, The Encounter of Third Kinds, I'm not too sure, very old movie, right, with the alien. So, so far, human worlds have actually experienced twice about contact with the AI, but we don't know about this. Uh, maybe we are uh, not aware of this. In fact, the first encounter is in social media. Your social media it is with all those AI algorithms and all that. Push the an attention economy. They try to retain you as much as possible because the more you stay in the social media apps, then they have actually more revenues from the advertisement. Okay, so if you look at this one in the social media, it is very difficult to quit. <laughs> Sometimes when you say you want to quit, uh, when you quit, it actually uh, 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 actually uh, push you more info. And then you watch again and you want to quit, push until you 
that you double click or double what and then you can quit from there because this is their revenue stream okay so attention economy so now the second one is actually artificial intelligence now the big difference between these two is this currently or maybe it's over already but when we use social media we the algorithm we know about our habits our choice our reading experience and push you information and this information are created by human being all right created by human but now with chat gpt the generated ai in future or maybe it's already going on now that when you read some article let's say you like to read this kind of article the next day when the same kind of article with different story that uh, that you like will push to you may not be written by a human being <laughs> may be written by a chat gpt or may be written by a genetic ai so in future the second encounter is actually they can actually con create content and deliver so who knows in future the the video even the video or whatever and all that they can uh, 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 you know that this is actually you like this actor or this actress and then you watch it in the TikTok uh, for many times, uh, the series and all that. But maybe after one year, they just tell you that these are actually artificial. Possible. Possible, huh? Okay, so we are entering this kind of thing and it, it, it can do 24 by 7 creation. So for those who are interested in this one, to think about this dilemma we are facing, uh, these two documentary movie, very good, very good. Uh, in YouTube, uh, you can actually scan it or you can actually take a picture of it or you just go to YouTube, you type social dilemma. Uh, then the, the same team now recently come up with the, another movie, documentary movie called AI Dilemma. It's good to spend time to go through the whole movie for you to understand what dilemma we are facing now. What the amount you're facing? I, I think I highly encourage you all to study this one. Okay. Uh, okay. Next one. People are also saying, you know, in future, uh, we may have a lot of uh, AI brothers and sisters, AI relatives and all that. You know? uh, and for small kids who actually grow, grow up and all that, together with their AI robots, uh, they may actually listen to the AI robots more than they listen to the parents. It's possible because it's human touch. And how this human touch is done is through years of actually uh, uh, sharing the time together and then recorded in our, in our brain neural network and all that. Okay, so that's why if you look at this one, Professor Hari is actually a famous author for these books and all that. They say two skills needed for the future, very important skill. The first one is adaptability and keep learning, which is growth mindset to continue to learn. Uh, the second one is actually mental balance and emotion intelligence. This is about the control of your emotions and all that. These are two important skills. Because why? Everything, if you learn about translation, language, you know a multiple language, but now ChatGPT can do a lot translation maybe better than us okay but of course it, it may ha not have the human touch it may still need your uh, experience translator to actually do some editing la. but basically what is important is actually these two skills adaptability and keep learning and skill number two mental balance and emotional intelligence even the world economy forum is actually focusing that how we should with the 21st century skill focusing on foundational literacy Competency, the four C's, transfer skill, uh, critical thinking, creativity, communication and collaboration, and the character building. So you are seeing that it's moving away, not just focusing on what need to be taught, what need to learn. It's beyond that one. It's come back to character building. It's coming back to your skills, transfer skills, which is very important uh, in future. Uh, then top 10 skills of 2025, the uh, Bible Economic Forum also mentioned the type of skills and all that. Uh, so the, the, uh, the slides uh, I've left with the organizer. So if you all want the slide, you just 
get it from uh, Bobby or who? Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay, you. Ah, uh, pardon. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, okay. Thank you. So you all can actually have access to it, lah, huh? Huh? So the OECD Learning Compass 2.2030 OECD group uh, also mentioned they are now not talking about what to teach. They say that we should help our children, help our students have built their own compass, life compass. And that life compass is equipped with uh, attitudes, values, skills, knowledge, and competency so that in the challenges of life and career, it guides them. Just like a compass. Uh, you can see the change in the educational uh, uh, perspective. Uh, even the broom sexual me, you will look at, uh, this is actually adopted by many uh, ministry of education in various countries. They talk about the training of the, the students based on cognitive, psychomotor, and affective. Brain, hand, and heart. It's a balanced kind of approach. Okay. Uh, all this I won't spend much time because uh, it is just a recap of the some educational uh, approach and policy. And then Professor Garnett uh, in the last uh, uh, century, 1980s, uh, came out with this theory of multiple intelligence. They say that we should develop in all these areas. Some people are stronger in certain ways, some may be weaker, but overall, that's how it makes a person a person. <laughs> okay. Basically, it is depending on the whole educational process. Uh, uh. And then even Professor Derek Bob, the president of Harvard University, also mentioned in the university education, what is important is actually about all this skill development, uh, 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 character building, uh, and all this one. And then he actually put the number eight, preparing for a career. I mean, it's as the last one <laughs> because they know that in future, People may change career half along the way. So what is important is something they can carry with them. Uh, carry with them is actually the, the personality, the character, the passion, or and the, the transfer learning a skill. These are the things that you can bring from one business to the other business, one industry to the other industry. And in terms of knowledge, you can always, if you want, you can always learn the new knowledge. Okay, uh, and then of course, when we are talking about this one, we talk about what's important and what's urgent. Okay, now, uh, for example, I just quick, quick, uh, I, I just give you an as a simple example. Now, uh, when you, when when we have free time, okay, sometimes pe nowadays people have this urgency that, of course, to check our social media, all right, to scan through our Facebook, all right to watch more TikTok or Instagram video and all that, okay? But this may be urgent lah, may, or because you satisfy the needs and all that. But we should think of something more important. Maybe we should spend, spend some time to do some reading so that we can connect our neural network, restructure it to prepare for more challenges in future. Sure. Uh, uh, we should think about more important things that, for example, uh, 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 doing exercise, <laughs> uh, eat healthy food, or spend more time in sleeping <laughs> about your health rather than all this urgent thing. So this is actually uh, uh, from the book of First Thing First uh, by Stephen Covey. He has this book. He mentioned about this uh, analogy to health. People know that health is important, okay, but we need to actually practice it. But sometimes we are too lazy or too tired to do certain things. Then we just say, oh, today too, too tired, lah. don't need to do uh, exercise. But in long term, this becomes urgent and important. No? Just like other things, family relationship, financial security and all that. So in life, we should always think about this long term. And for this long term one, the way to do it is to build, to build the habits. To build the habits and all that. So just imagine... Every day now, all the models, AI models in the world, they are learning 24 hours. <laughs> so for us to really to have to face this one, we have to learn as well. And reading is still very important. Reading is still very important. Because by reading, uh, you are because this is bio uh, chemical process, no? You you you, you are, we are we cannot be as fast as a computer. We need to read, we need to think. 
then slowly connect to others. Because when we read, uh, we are not just simply take, uh, learning the knowledge uh, recorded in that particular page of the book. We are connecting to the whole network of yourself. You know? uh, so that leading process is very important. Uh, how you can compare, you can actually perform better compared to those who just simply get data from internet or from ChatGPT is because you build out your reserve. <laughs> you build out your reserve and that is very important. Okay, so that's why learning of hearts is also getting more and more important about all these things. This is the character building. Very, very important. Okay, and uh, And of course, uh, this uh, professor, uh, Angela Duckwork uh, from UPenn, uh, uh, she is actually uh, famous for her research in, uh, in, in this grid. In fact, uh, according to her research, all those who are successful uh, are those people with grit. With grit meaning what? Although they have talent, they put in efforts so that they have the skill. And although they have the skill, they also continue to put in effort and they got achievement. So it's not just talent as itself. It must actually couple with the passion and persistence that she call grit. Okay. So these are some of the updates lah, about the education approach. So by knowing ChatGPT and then by go through going through this one, then roughly you know uh, how is actually how we should uh, actually prepare ourselves better. Now we go deeper into the ChatGPT, but not just about knowledge, but about about mental challenges. Uh, okay. uh, professor Richard Davison is a very famous professor of psychology and psychiatry. Uh, when he was young, he was a PhD student in Harvard University at that time together with Daniel Goldman. And when they were many years ago, it was many, many years ago, uh, and they actually went to India to, to learn meditation. Now, of course, every day they still do meditation and all. So, he actually say that uh, nowadays, uh, human world, uh, we all face with mental challenges. And the four major ones, uh, according to him, is actually the first one is distractibility. We are easily distracted. So, uh, like when we are watching a movie at home, okay, on the, uh, I mean, in the Sunday, uh, maybe morning or afternoon or even night time and all that, when you watch a movie, then after five minutes, uh, the movie uh, is a bit slow, meaning the, 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 the storylines become a bit slow. Naturally, we will actually reach out to our phone. Then we check our WhatsApp. You know? So if this is good news, then you say, oh, okay, lah. then do some, prep, some work, then continue to watch your movie. Then after another five minutes, again, and this time maybe some bad news. Then so, throughout the whole experience of watching the movie is no longer like in old days now where you enjoy it you appreciate you live in it but it's full with this one now human being is not like computer no? computer they can do multitasking <laughs> actually even if you know the architecture computer architectures of a computer it's not doing uh, multitasking it's just that it is doing time uh, multiplexing Time division multiplication is just that if you ask the computer to do five tasks together, it just actually distribute the time to do it uh, to five sections and then keep rotating each one. And each time when it is handling one task, it focuses fully on that task. Okay? But human being, we can't do so because all our networks and all that are connected together. We can't say, oh, this part, okay, watching movie. And this part, handling uh, uh, WhatsApp and all that. No, they are interconnected. They are influencing each other and all that. So why are we getting less happy? Because why? When we actually pay attention to many things at the same time, you know, not all the things are handled at the same time. right? Some faster, some later and all that. So if it is like when we are doing a certain task, we are carrying with many stones on our back. Okay? So the moment even you are happy, happily celebrating your birthday, uh, but inside your brain at that time, uh, you are thinking about this problem, that problem, this problem. 
how can we you be happy? Distractibility. He said this is number one problem. It started with distractibility. Okay. Then after that, uh, although we, we, we are now actually multi uh, efficient in the sense that we deal with many things. We are like world leaders. Every day, check what the news in the world. We worried about all happening in the world. And everywhere near our, our friends, the whole community of your friends and relatives, because through Facebook, you know every day the details. So there are many things that you cherish. There are many things that you actually worry about them. So many things and all that. So although you do a lot of things now, but somehow feel lonely. <laughs> How are you lonely? Okay, so loneliness is another thing. And when lon lonely and all that, and a lot of time start talking about negative talk, this thing, thing and then uh, bring it out, then think about it, and then add some more ingredients, some more, <laughs> at least some more, and then store it, and next time bring it out, then store it. And all. So after a few rounds, uh, even a person you don't hate so much, uh, after a few rounds, you hate, it, hate that person so much. Because you keep on adding things. Our brain and all that. Oh, negative self-talk and depression start growing. And then you say, that you wonder, why I'm so busy but I'm still not happy? <laughs> why I, I've, I've, I've done so many things, I've actually put light in so many people's uh, <laughs> Facebook, why they don't like me? <laughs> Some people may think about this one. Oh, so uh, depression and then loss of meaning and purpose in life. But there's a way to solve this, no? according to Professor Richard Davidson. There's a way. Uh, so in this book, The Author Traits, I think you can get it. Uh, uh, it's published uh, before COVID time. You know? uh, it's, a, it's a book between Daniel Goleman and Richard Davidson. Daniel Goleman is the author of The Emotional Intelligence. Very famous author. Okay? So through scientific experiment using functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI and all that, they actually found out that inside our human brain, the neural network and all that, uh, all can be trained, can be actually adjusted so that we are happier, so that we are more focused. It is possible. So this book is actually a science reviews, uh, mentioned that science reviews how meditation changes your mind, brain and body. So it's important that every day we spend some time doing puja, when you focus your mind, uh, every day spend some time on meditation. All this will help you. Because why? According to them, the solution is actually focus. Don't be distracted too much. Focus. Because when you're focused, like for example, just now, if the talk has been interesting, you have been so much in, uh, uh, immerse yourself in this talk and all that, you find out that actually time passes very fast. I think you have the experience. Sometimes you do something, you, are, you like it so much. Huh? Time passes very fast. You have this experience of what we call flow. F-L-O-W, flow. Uh, that is because you're focused and all that. Okay? So according to their research and all that, all these things, even from scientific research and all that, the moment you focus, okay, you actually uh, uh, will, will feel happy. I have a few more slides later to tell you more. Okay, So uh, that's why sometimes when we are actually uh, distracted by many things, please sometimes pay attention back to your own attention. <laughs> Meaning, do a meditation uh, and mindfulness. mindfulness. So sometimes your handphone, uh, you can install this mindfulness apps uh, uh, with the Tibetan bowl, singing bowl. Ding! Every 15 minutes, ding, then you remind. The moment you, you hear this one, you tell them, I focus on what I'm doing now. Then slowly you develop this focused mind. And always we always connect people through the internet and social media. Please remember to call your inner self from time to time. Okay. So according to Professor Richard Davidson, they say that everybody in terms of personality, there's always this six emotional style. Uh, one is actually resilience, ability to come back. Attention, to pay attention, to be focused. Outlook is actually some have a positive outlook. Some may have negative outlook. Uh, sensitive to context that you know what is the context of conversation, the situation and all that. Self-awareness and social intuition is actually how you can actually looking at people's face, you know what should say, what should be said, what should not be said. Like. 
Uh, so this is actually emotional styles and all that. And Daniel Goldman, uh, the famous author of Emotional Intelligence, he came up with this book called Focus. And when he wrote this book, Focus, uh, is the time when smartphone was introduced. Because he said that smartphone will make uh, all of us uh, very... Uh, Make, make us actually distract easily. So he actually wrote this book, Focus is actually the hidden driver of excellence. And then later, this latest book, Author Trick. Huh? It's good for you all to actually take a look. Now, but you look at it, uh, in fact, in the according to the father of psychology, uh, of American psychology, Professor William James, in the 19th century, uh, he has already mentioned, you know, he said that, the education or attention would be an education par excellence. He said that actually education itself, the most important aspect of the education is actually this uh, uh, attention, educational attention. Because the moment you can attend to certain things, you focus, you learn better. Your neural network will learn better. Okay? So, and the attention is actually the faculty of voluntarily bringing back a wandering attention. Over and over again is the very root of the judgment, character, and view. Uh, so this is something to share with. Even 19th century, people were saying that able to do this focus study, very important. Uh, and then two Harvard professors have done this research more than 10 years ago, uh, dealing with 2,000 over people. They say that wandering Maya is always not happy. <laughs> They found out when people feel happy is actually when they are focused, when they are actually enjoying do certain things. Certain. Uh, this is actually, you can check the internet and uh, you just talk, type, type Harvard uh, Wandering Mind. Uh, then you can find actually many things about this part. Okay? So it's because I mentioned to you why this person like to climb the cliff. It's very dangerous. But because it's very dangerous, he has to be very focused. And when he is very focused in doing this sport, his mind is very calm. They like this kind of experience and all that. So the same thing as I mentioned about flow, sometimes time flies so fast because you enjoy so much. And when you are actually in it, you live calmly, peacefully in whatever you are focused, you are doing it, in. you have the flow and you have less mind problems and all that. Uh, okay. Uh, so Charles Darwin also mentioned that uh, nowadays is actually not the strongest of the species, la, but actually the most responsive to change. Okay, So by knowing about the mental challenges and how being focused will be able to do so, then we come back to this, uh, the neural network. Uh, neuroplasticity, the latest uh, cognitive science say that everybody can do lifelong learning. Even when we are actually at the age of 80, 90s, 100, our neuron can still do connections every day. I mean, we are still able to learn every day. And the ability to learn, that means that there's also ability to unlearn. Uh, so some bad memories and all that, uh, when it comes out and all that, if you just ignore it and you just focus on whatever you're doing, slowly the brain will think that uh, this is not important. Uh, then uh, you supply less nutrients, less energy to that one and you may forget. <laughs> so the simple thing is actually, uh, 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 that, that's actually how the ways, how you can uh, sometimes, uh, you see, why sometimes we can remember certain, certain things, continue to remember and then continue to travel our mind. It's because every time we think about it, we think it's very important and then we add something and all that. So the brain will think that this is important information, must store, cannot delete. You understand what I mean? Uh, but if every time it comes up, you say, let go, I forgive that person, let go, or I just focusing on doing certain things, then slowly you actually fade out. Because the brain thing that is no longer important. Because the brain will protect us first with nature of this one. That's how we survive. Okay? Because personal safety is very important. So uh, those actually that may actually uh, important, they will actually try to actually continue to remember. And all. So so whatever we learn from Dharma and all that, you can see that we, it goes well with the current research and finding of cognitive science. Okay? And if you want to train our, our if you want to train our brain and all that, so every day do good this. 
every day saying good words and then every day uh, 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 do and think with good thoughts and all that. And all your neural network, internet connection uh, will slowly link like that one and you see brighter future, you see everybody's different look and all that. It's true this kind of, just like how ChatGPT Chat GPT is learning. Uh, Chat, Chat, that's why ChatGPT has to be interfered by a group of the uh, human expert. It's because if you just take everything from the whatever in the internet, you may reply with many things which is actually negative, no? Okay, so you have to actually, there's also a ability for us because whatever we do, our inner world is through all the information through our senses coming into our this. And then uh, there's interconnection or interconnection of brain neurons. Uh. Uh, we have all together 100 billion neurons and in the average person, uh, the neurons is connected to 1,000 over other neurons. So all these connections are the parameters, are some sort of like the parameters in the generative AI model, okay? It, but for us, it is the connection. Or we are not the values of parameter, it's actually the connection, the strength of the connection. So all together in our brain, we have 100 trillion of neurons. 100 trillion of neurons. Uh, just look at the next slide. This is done by a Google uh, 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 about this neuron. Uh, the one at the center here is actually one neuron. In our brain, okay, we have we have hundred over billion uh, neuron in in our brain, okay. So and all these are interconnection. You can see that it's very complex in our brain. The connections, okay. So every day, uh, there are new neurons connection being generated. There are new neuron connections because long time no use uh, and all that, it disconnect. So. Whatever we want to do, whatever new habits you want to develop, whatever bad habits you want to eradicate, it is possible. Because all through here. Then that's why uh, when we do puja, when we learn, and when we say every day must have good thought, good, do good things, you know, slowly you actually transform our neural network interconnection in our brain. Okay? And then you look at this one. Uh, the neurons in our, remember you say in our brain, or we have the neuron, we have 100 trillion neuron connections, am I? Uh, you look at GPT-4. GPT-4 now, they have 100 trillion parameters, the same complexity as human world, human brain. <laughs> okay, so who knows, in the next generation, they will continue to be more, huh? so we don't know, uh, they will be smarter or whatever, we don't know. Uh, so it's up to this kind of a, parameter, then you can see the, the emergence of intelligence. Huh? So more on chat GPT, okay, uh, uh, based on large language models and all that. Uh, this one basically I've actually uh, 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 explained to you just now. Uh, it's possible with hallucination, I mean errors and mistakes, because it's based on property, based on that one. Sometimes it may give you wrong answer. Sometimes it may give you fake answers, okay. So it is proper because by the way I explained to you, it's not perfect. Uh, it's not perfect and all that. And then in teaching and learning, uh, of course, for those who are doing teaching and all that, it can help. It will be actually a good assistant uh, to help us at uh, GPT in teaching and all that. And for learning, if you know how to use it as learning, you help if you you help you more. Uh, the famous uh, linguistic uh, Noam Chomsky actually once uh, mentioned about ChatGPT, they say that ChatGPT is very good for motivated learners. If you are motivated learners, you can learn many things. Okay, So I think about this, I say that, in fact, if you look at just now, we say we need knowledge worker with growth mindset and also empathy. Uh, because of this one, we need first motivated learners so they can continue to learn new things and we need responsive contributor that will actually, after they learn, they contrib contribute to the mankind, contribute to society, but uh, be responsible for all this. Uh, these are very important. Okay, so uh, if you look at this one, uh, when the babies are, uh, uh, are educated and then they grown up, they grown up to be a different person with different personality. Uh, the same thing, if I give you, all of you, a new handphone today, 
you look at a handful, all the same. But after a month, when you come back, everybody has different content in your handful, right? Huh? In fact, you are educating your handful in the past month differently. Every day we are de- educating our handful. If is the handful is our child and all. So the same thing, you know, education process, any everything, the culture of organizations, uh, uh, the country, the world, and all that uh, is all shaped by all this. So everything, every day we do certain part that we can do, slowly we can transform the family, organization, company, uh, the society, nation, or the world. Okay, now, this is all possible. Huh? And, and why is it possible? Because Professor Daniel Kahneman, the Nobel laureate, nah, mentioned that actually in our brain, there are two systems of working. The first system one is actually in uh, uh, instinctive and emotional. Because this is something that you already have the connection. For example, you go to the Japan Pina, uh, the economy rise. Uh, you look at it, which one will you choose? Normally, you, it's very easy for you to choose them, right? Uh, you choose, choose it. Why is it that? Why, why do you choose all those dishes? Because in the past, you have tasted it and you like it. It's in your neural network <laughs> connection. So it's your system one, okay? But if to, today you go to a new, new, another country and you go to the buffet restaurant and serve different kind of cuisine, then you are uncertain what to eat, and right? So you have to use your system two. Your system two is more logical uh, thinking. You think about, oh, this is made of what? Means, uh, this is something I like. Maybe I should try it. And, and, and then you take it. Then the next trip, maybe after three months later, you go back to the same country. You look at all dishes. You know already. You choose which wherever. That means that we are continuing learning. Everything is possible. If we have the wish, uh, it's possible. Just like what Buddha has taught us. Uh, every day we can do something to actually improve ourselves. Uh, it is possible. Because why? Why this ability to believe in ourselves that we can be better with growth mindset and belief is very important. Because we are not just facing the challenge of the chat GPT only, you know. What are what are coming? <laughs> the future challenges. Very soon, who knows, maybe another 10 years there will be nuclear fusion. And if really nuclear fusion can be uh, operational and all that, the supply of energy is so abundant. Okay, you transform many things because energy is actually a a a a, 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 sub, a power that we need to actually help uh, develop a uh, society. Uh, who knows? Maybe there will be metaverse. Uh, that in future there's a new challenge. Your your children spend more time in metaverse than recognizing you and then only come out to take breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> or, or genetic engineering has transformed you then in future. It's so simple. It, uh, when you want to go for treatment, then change the organ. Uh, we can generate stem cell. We can generate the new organ. Then if you and somebody has some disease and all that, then can do genetic engineering to change your gene so that certain disease uh, will not be actually easy to uh, be initiated or whatever. That, that totally will transform how. Or we can be like the, the plants using photosynthesis, we can actually create food. <laughs> Maybe we can harness this technology, AI, and we may go to Mars. More challenges, a lot of things to learn. <laughs> or, or interstellar travel. Oh, who knows? Maybe aliens come. <laughs> we never know. We never. Or oh, oh, quantum computing, brain machine interface, time machine. There will be more things la, coming out and all that. So how to handle this is actually with a positive mind, positive mindset, growth mindset. Knowing that everything can be learned, we can become better. That is very important. Okay? And that's why levels of education, uh, education just for survival and work is not enough. Uh, from young and all that, we need our children, we need our students. And even nowadays, for us as well, we also need to actually equip ourselves with education for living, know how to appreciate living. There are many things in life that in future, maybe we have a lifelong AI companion. <laughs> we never know, okay? 
and also life education, the meaning of life, thinking of the meaning of life and all that. Uh, all this is very important uh, in education. Uh, and because uh, what is what we can see above the sea level is something, but what is beneath is something you build, your inner strength. And this inner strength now we are learning every day. And to men, to some people, they may be actually uh, inputting this one through TikTok, Instagram, Facebook every day. But they must always have this awareness that the moment if something is moving, the algorithm is pushing them to something they, they don't want, they have the power to press the stop button uh, to actually escape from that one. Self-discipline, self-awareness is becoming a very important skill. <laughs> ability okay now how do you actually adjust the algorithm since algorithm is based on feedback and all that so the moment you think that you are pressed uh, you are actually pushed with information you don't want to see and all that you can always do a search do more search do more search when you do search uh, you say that i want to know more about education i want to know more about meditation i want to know more about uh, 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 developing a uh, uh, good leadership in company i want to all these uh, things that you think you develop yourself, then the algorithm will push you more of this information. Remember, this is self-awareness, self-discipline. Time. Indicate their answers. Ah, yes. Oh, yes, correct. So when they post something, you tell them right away, I don't like this. Uh, then they will learn and then they won't push this one. Thank you. Uh, okay, so it's very important. So it comes back to all this ability of understanding ourselves, ability of controlling ourselves, ability to actually continue to improve ourselves. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.